I'm Rafael from Nepata and I love listening to you today FM. My name is Ken Gudla and I'm from Australia but I'm part region from Rotraki and I love listening to today FM Rocks. For the best music and less talk, we tune in to Today FM in Nasilai Village. Today FM Rocks. My name is Inaya Ali and I'm from Ba and I love the big breakfast on Today FM. I just love it and hope you love it too. My name is Jay from La Pasa. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM Rocks. My name is Naushin and I'm from Sambeto and I love Today FM. Today FM Rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni and this is FPC News. Tonight, residents hope for justice as alleged conman is arrested. Time running out for Koro villages. And Matilda Vakarao is Miss Sugar 2016. Hundreds of residents in Sakoda outside Suva who were allegedly misled by Mukesh Naidu are hoping that justice will now be served. Naidu, who had been evading police for over a year, was arrested on Friday. Sharon Shivan with the story. All the income I had, my, the, you know, typical money, I spent it on my land. 50-year-old Ramesh Chand came to Suva with his family in 2003. He hoped to build a small house to begin their new lives. This all came to naught after he was allegedly conned by Mukesh Naidu. Then I saw all the bulldozer digger going on, so I thought, uh, then I talked to him and said, oh, I can give you one land, on a piece of land. So he, they showed me the block down here, and uh, I, then I paid the money. Naidu allegedly collected close to $3 million from residents here. Naidu's company, M. Naidu Development, was given a five-year development lease in Sakoda and it was responsible for developing close to 300 land lots in the area. This was never completed as Naidu took off with the money. Back in 2012, when it was advertised in the paper regarding sale of lots, then we approached Mukesh Naidu. Based on that, eh, we paid, and we paid a substantial amount. After paying the substantial amount, eh, then Mukesh was not wondering with his words. Naidu allegedly sold one landlord more than five times. Most of these residents are poor farmers who have moved from the northern and western divisions. I give him to 28,000 cash to Mukesh Naidu. And Mukesh Naidu between four years, they never been do anything. He take my money, still running here and running there. More than 144 people had earlier filed complaints against Naidu with the Fiji Commerce Commission. Naidu is expected to be produced at the Suva Magistrates Court tomorrow. There are many stories like this which were untold by the people of Sakoda. Some who lost their entire life saving and others who made partial payments to Naidu are now waiting for him to be brought before court. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. Villagers in Koro are hoping that they will have time to rebuild their homes before the next cyclone season kicks in. Building materials to the island are being delivered. However, villagers say it's being done in portions and many haven't been able to complete their homes. Roland Koroy reports. Seven months on and with less than two months to go before the next cyclone season and life here on Koro is the same. There's a table on the top. It's very hard for us during a rainy season and windy season to sleep there. Uh, go to the whole ten world. My family, I take my family to the dining hall. Devita Vunilemba's experiences are similar to others on Koro Island. I'm poking the tapulin so that the rain doesn't gather and drip into the house. Every time it rains, I have to do this. If not, water gets into the house. It's good you are here now to see it for yourself. See how clothes are wet because I was outside working and came in too late to poke the tapulin. The rain has come in and wet everything. That's why all our things are always in bags, to make it easy for us to move it. Tents are a common sight in all cyclone-affected villages on Koro. 
Just recently, when the rain started, it came inside our tent, so we put up more tarpaulin to cover the walls inside the tent. We had also had to use our blankets to cover the walls. Now two people have to share one blanket because we have used it all to cover the walls. You can look for yourself to see what I am saying. Villagers on Koro who survived the Category 5 storm are clearly still scarred from their ordeal. We are in a really sorry state. We're just relying on the government and on God to help us. I'm not speaking for myself. I speak on behalf of everyone in Nassau village and everyone on the island of Koro when I say that we are scared. We are worried that if another cyclone comes, what else will we do? Even our evacuation center was damaged. Where will we run? Why villagers here at Nassau have acknowledged the shortage of timber, as explained by hardware stores and the government, they continue to live in fear of having to deal with another cyclone in tents such as these. Elesi tells me she is worried for her grandson Lepani, and her story mirrors that of many others in a village that was ravaged by T.C. Winston. Roland Koroi, FBC News. Miss Telecom Fiji Sugar Festival, Matilda Vakarao aims to raise awareness on paraplegia at the Miss Fiji pageant later this year. The USP student told FPC journalist Ellen Stoltz that a message is inspired by her father. The long wait was worth it for all nine contestants at the week-long festival, but more so for the newly crowned winner who attributed the win to the support of family and friends. The young queen says her father inspired her to enter the pageant. I wanted to enter this pageant because uh, I wanted to raise more awareness on uh, people with special needs. Speaking from experience, my father is a quadriplegic and he's been in a wheelchair for 18 years. And I've been looking after him and I just wanted to do something for him. Matilda's win automatically gets her into the Miss Fiji pageant and she says she will continue to advocate on the same message. I want to make people aware of their ability and of their disability because my father is paralyzed but he still became an artist. Sugar Festival Association Vice President Bush Raj says the festival has been a huge success and they will help Miss Sugar prepare for her next journey. Yes, of course, yes. that's our contestant and she has won this crown and we are going to support her to the last stage. First runner-up for the pageant went to Akanisi Nawa while Serena Lanyon won second runner-up Miss Talent and Miss Personality. Miss Congeniality was awarded to Salote Nawai. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. Still to come on FBC News, the ever-popular rock market continues to grow. And meet a Dalonitana farmer who is our successful Fijian tonight. Stay with us. Bula FM number dua NSR. Welcome back. You with FBC News. The popularity of Suva's monthly rock market has seen an increase in the number of stalls as well as the space to cater for newcomers. The market venue has now been extended to take up the whole of Carnarvon Street. Anna Ravulo was at the market today and files this report. For most, the rock market is something the whole family looks forward to, while for others, it's an ideal money-making opportunity. Rock market coordinator Elana Kaloni Singer says they had to increase the number of vendors due to the demand. We have had so many inquiries with some people with some really beautiful products, so we wanted to open up the market a little bit more and give vendors more chance of exposure and opportunity to be a part of the rock. 
the market also provides the chance to create awareness. So this is a way of turning in waste streams into income streams and sending the trash back to the countries where it's manufactured. Meanwhile, a customer from Austria says the market is definitely a place to find things for your home. It's being a market where you find local products but also some alternative items in terms of food, in terms of plants, in terms of yeah, maybe also souvenirs you won't find at other places. The rock market happens every month, but this month is different because they've extended their market to this stretch and we can expect this event in the Western Division later this year. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. Work on the Stinson Parade Bridge in Suva is expected to go ahead as scheduled. The bridge near the Suva market has been closed for almost four years. Tokasa Renima reports. Work on the demolition of the Ports Authority building to make way for the new bridge has been completed. Fiji Roads Authority Manager for Bridges and Jetties, Nixon Toramana, says everything is on schedule. You know, baseline schedule is for 29 months. So that's about the end of 2018, um, but you know, uh, that's without taking into account uh, delays. Huh? So if there are any delays, it could be a little bit more than that. So uh, uh, the schedule, like, based on CRG 14 schedule, it starts with uh, Watuanga Bridge. Once the piling is done, then they'll move to uh, Stinson Bridge. Norimana says the construction of new bridges has been funded by China's government grant aid while the Fijian government's contribution is four and a half million dollars. And they're just waiting for their temporary bridge platform to come here, because they're going to build a, a platform on the side of the existing bridge, just to enable their cranes to move in and out, so they can demolish the existing bridge and then build a new one. According to the Fiji Roads Authority, works on the Stinson Parade Bridge will complete in two and a half years' time. Tokasarai Nima, FBC News. The secret to getting ahead is getting started. That's exactly what Gabriel Soso did when traditional obligations brought him back to the village after years of living in the Lambasa township. Eleanor Trangaivu spoke to our successful Fijian, who is one of the biggest Dalonitana farmers in Vanualevu. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Living behind a life you have become accustomed to is not easy, especially when you have to give everything up to take up traditional duties back in the village. I lived in Lambasa for about 15 years until I had to move back to the village to take up the call for traditional duties. Ngamberiele Soso was born in Langi village Ndongotuki, Madhuwata, but lived most of his life with his siblings in Lambasa. A very hands-on and practical person, Soso was an expert in upholstery. I was running an upholstery, joinery and cabinet business. Burns Philip used to provide me with the materials and I used to provide the labor. Every month I would supply them with 10 sets of furniture. After the passing away of a senior member of the clan, Soso was required to take up traditional duties in the village, which meant giving up his life in Lambasa and moving back with his wife and children. When my father told my siblings and I that one of us had to answer to the call, I volunteered because no one else could come. So I closed my business and moved back to the village. My first year at the village, was in 1997. At the village, Soso knew he had to do something in order to sustain their livelihood, so he turned to their land, acres and acres of land, planting root crops and yangona. The father of five says the move was not easy for the family as a whole, but as time went by, they began to accept that this would be their life. I started farming and I told my parents, I will only return once you both have died. They passed on but I am still here because after farming, I realized that much more money was here in the farm compared to what I was earning previously. 
About two years ago, a disaster happened. Soso's Yangona farm was burnt to the ground. That, however, did not deter him, as he is now utilizing the same land to plant Ndalonitana. Today, Soso is one of Vnolevu's biggest Ndalonitana farmer. When my Yangona farm was destroyed, I couldn't do much, so I decided to plant Ndalonitana because it's easy to plant and it doesn't take long to harvest. To be honest, I am earning much more money from Dalonitana compared to Yangona. With an abundance of land around, Soso is urging unemployed youths to use the land, till it cultivate it and farm on the land in order to sustain a livelihood. He says the first step to getting ahead and achieving something is to get started. Eleanor Turangaiwiu. FBC News. Successful Fijians was brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Coming up later in sports, Marist Hockey set to kick off. I am a Hungarian Tauka Kelalese. हमारे दिल में और दिमाग में खाली रेडियो फिजी टू है और सभी भाइयों से आग्रह करते हैं कि रेडियो फिजी टू सुनना चाहिए मेरा नाम अभिनेश है मैं नेंदी का रहने वाला हूं मैं सभी समय रेडियो फिजी टू सुनता हूं क्योंकि उसमें आईना प्रोग्राम रहता है हाय मैं उमेश नसासा नाबुआ से मैं जब भी सुना रेडियो फिजी टू सुना रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Welcome to FPC Sports and organizers of the Marist Eastgate Hockey Open are hoping that this year's event will be their biggest yet. And the anticipating teams from around the country as well as from the region will make it a worthy battle for the prestigious Reginald and Dorothy Eastgate trophies. Meli Tavanga has more. Teams from around the country will converge at the National Hockey Turf in Lovala next month for the annual Marist Eastgate Hockey Open. What's special about this tournament is how it's evolved the sport and players in Fiji over the years. Uh, uh, again, without the help, we've actually uh, raised the prize money to 13000 this year, uh, compared to, uh, I believe it was 7000 last year. Um, so for the, for the spectators, expect a very competitive hockey. Organizers have confirmed that 18 local and one overseas team which consists players from New Zealand and Australia will compete in the tournament. Just coming down from uh, New Zealand is actually a very uh, competitive team. They are A-grade players, and uh, also the women too. Uh, teams from the West have been training. Um, just, just it's going to be a very competitive hockey. Comp the Maris Eastgate Hockey Open will be held from the 23rd to the 25th of this month. But in this tournament, winning isn't everything. It's about passion family and development of hockey, which is why it lives on 22 years later. Meli Tabanga, FBC Sports. The Lambasa football team lost both of its matches at home this weekend. The Mamasinga Lions lost to Bar 1-0 yesterday and was beaten by Nandi this afternoon. Bar will return to the burning west from Subrail Park with maximum six points after they beat Draketi 3-0 earlier this afternoon. Earlier in the day, the 2016 Inc. Mobile BOG champions Lotoka defeated Rewa 3-2 at Prince Charles Park. Lotoka now leads the points table with 13 points. The Tadirua rugby team defeated Matuku 13-12 in the semi-final of the Nasinu Rugby Union competition yesterday at the Queen Elizabeth Barrack Ground in Nambua. Tadirua was the favourite in the tournament after they topped the table at the end of round three last weekend. The Tadirua rugby side will now focus on next week's final where they will meet Ului Nakao. Nasinu rugby is now active after a lapse of 10 years. This is also an achievement for the new management team who has successfully organized a 15-a-side tournament in Nasinu. Meanwhile, in the second semi-final, Ului Nakao beat Newtown 17-5. Tadirua and Ulinaka will meet in the final of the Nasinu Rugby Union competition next Saturday at the Queen Elizabeth Barracks. Mexican Canel Canelo Alvarez beat undefeated Liam Smith before more than 50,000 fans in Dallas at the home of the Cowboys. 
Alvarez knocked down Smith after a vicious body shot with 32 seconds left in the ninth round of the 12th round fight. Alvarez landed 113 power punches to Smith's 68, and Alvarez's total punch count was 157 to 115. An Iranian per cyclist has died after a crash during the men's C45 road race at the Rio Paralympics. An investigation into the circumstances of the accident has been launched. Brothers Julian and Adi Savia scored a try each as New Zealand demolished South Africa 41-13 last night to clinch the rugby championship title. Julian Savia scored his 44th try in 47 tests as the All Blacks crushed a bold challenge from the Springboks who led 15-10 at halftime. Meanwhile, Australia beat Argentina 36-20 last night. The Wallabies will play the Springboks at 3 or 5 a.m. on the 2nd of October, while the All Blacks play Argentina at 10, 10 a.m. And just like yesterday, fine weather prevailed over the country today as well. Lambasa maintained its lead at the top of the temperature chart with 32 degrees, followed closely by Ba on 30. Suva and Savu Savu recorded the coolest temperatures at 27 degrees. You can expect the cool nights to continue. For tomorrow, fine once again with a chance of showers in the afternoon for the capital Suva as well as Savu Savu. At sea, moderate to fresh southeast winds and rough seas are expected. For Monday, it should be fine apart from brief showers about the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. It will be cool at night once again. Recapping the headlines. Hundreds of residents in Sakoda outside Suva hope for justice as alleged conman Mukesh Naidu is arrested to be produced in court tomorrow. Villagers in Koro who are still in tents live in fear as the cyclone season approaches. And Matilda Vakarao is Miss Sugar 2016. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to this week's poll question, and we are asking, should an expatriate be hired as the new Sevens coach? To answer, you can visit our FPC website. You can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email, citizenseyes at fpc.com.fj, or share it with us via our Facebook page, FPC News. If you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us those news tips at FPC News or hashtag FPC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshini. Good night. Yandra, I love listening to Gold FM at Golden Point Resort. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hola, my name is General from Bakri Village. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Moses from Valleu. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Marida Manako. I'm from Kandavu. I like listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Silipa from Tavo Town. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.